control. Watch out. Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you down. how to undervolt your GPU so that you can have your computer run a lot cooler and a lot quieter and so the fans don't have to spin up okay. quite so loud. I have a um, razor blade laptop and the fans on this, just with default stock settings, when they get going, it literally sounds like a jet engine preparing for takeoff. It is so loud that I can hardly even hear the sound from the game coming out of the speakers. And so the way I found to make it um, a lot cooler and a lot quieter is to undervolt your GPU. Um, first, before I show you that, let me show you what I'm doing. I'm also undervolting my CPU. And to do that, I'm undervolting it using Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility. Um, you just come right here and just adjust the core voltage offset. And I'm running 125 millivolts right now. Um, and it keeps the CPU a lot cooler. I also have disabled Turbo Boost technology. So stock for this CPU is to run at 3400 megahertz if all four cores are active. I feel like that's just too much. It's too much frequency, it's too much voltage, and it just makes it way too hot. So I've disabled Turbo Boost. You do that in the BIOS. I'll throw up some pictures here so you can see where you disable Turbo Boost in the BIOS. Um, but yeah, I feel like that doesn't affect performance that much and I would much rather have a cooler, quieter computer than a jet engine that's running at 3400 megahertz. So anyways, let's get over to how you undervolt the GPU. So MSI Afterburner is a great tool. I wish this power limit was turned on and enabled for us so that we could just adjust that to limit power, but we can't. So we have to get a little more creative. That's where you click on, see this little pie chart or this little graph, stepping graph? Click on that and it'll open up the Voltage Frequency Curve Editor. Now, what this does, this number along the bottom is the voltage that the GPU is going to get. This is the frequency for that voltage. So, you can see that right now, if you click on these little, these little square boxes, this is how you adjust the frequency for that voltage. So right now, we're running at 1480 at 762 millivolts. Not bad. This plus 100 is because I've overclocked it. So stock for this GPU would be 1380 at 762 millivolts. I've actually upped it to 1480. So I've got a plus 100 frequency overclock on my GPU. Now just like your CPU, how much you can overclock this thing is going to depend on the silicon quality of your GPU. Some people won't be able to go over stock. Some people might be able to go 200. I don't know. I really haven't gone above 100. I haven't tested it. Maybe I could go plus 250 at this. Who knows? You just have to test it. It'll crash. Come back in here and adjust it. It's not hurting anything when it's crashing. Okay, so I also wish we could see how much millivolts it's getting right now, but we can't. This is turned off. I don't know if it's NVIDIA or if it's Razer who turned this off, but you can download another program called HW Info 64 and you can actually see the voltage that you're getting. We can assume that we're getting 762 millivolts because that's what we have it set to, but it's kind of nice to see. Yes, that is actually what we're getting. Um, so now let me show you stock and how you actually create this curve. Um, so if we flip back to stock, you click this little arrow button here and you'll see the curve will change back to the stock values. There they are, and you can see, watch the GPU up to 1835. Oh, and watch our temps. We're gonna go into engine takeoff fan mode here once it reaches around 80 degrees. And you can see over here, we're at 1044. There's also a very faint red dotted line here. This is where it's currently at. So we're right over here at 1050. Oh, there's the fans. Hopefully you can still hear me because they're so blasted loud. So we're right around 1050, which is just way too much for these little dinky fans they have in here. So let's say this is what yours will look like if you haven't set up a custom voltage frequency curve. So the way to manually change this, you click on these little square boxes and you drag them down. But you don't want to drag you know, 15,000 of these things because it's a pain in the butt. So to drag all of them, you hold down the control key 
and you pull them down. So the way to set up your, your frequency, you want to pull this far right one down, real low. Then you want to come over here and find the frequency or the voltage that you want to run your GPU at. So let's say that you want to run your GPU at uh, 800 millivolts. Sounds good. It's about, you know, 250 less than stock. So what you do is you come to this 800, pull it up so that it's up to stock, which would be 1481. I'm going to I'm going to actually overclock this by 50. So we're going to run 800 millivolts at 1531. So once you've got that to your point, you have to make sure all the points in front of it are below it. So once you've done that, you click the checkbox. You can see it pulls all of these voltages up to this base one. And you can see we've already gone up to 1531. Look at our temps dropping, ready down to 75 degrees. And so the GPU is smart enough to know that, hey, I can run at 1531 at 800 millivolts. I don't need to even go above that because all these frequencies are at 1531. So it picks the lowest one. That's why we dragged this all the way down. Okay. So that's it guys, you can see the GPU is already running cooler. Performance really honestly doesn't change that much for these frequencies. So you can play around with this, see how high you can overclock it. Maybe you guys could go all the way up to 200. I don't want to go too high because I don't want to crash my computer while I'm recording. But yeah, you guys might be able to go plus 200, 800 millivolts, your, your temps will be great performance will be awesome and more importantly your fans won't sound like jet engines preparing for takeoff. One thing I forgot to mention so I'll just insert this little clip into the video is make sure after you create your custom voltage frequency curve make sure you save it to a profile otherwise it'll just revert back to the default when it loads next time. So to save a profile after you've made your curve you just click this little disk button and then you just select the profile number you want to save it to. So you just click five, it'll say profile five saved. And then when you come in here, you can just click that and it'll reload this curve. All right, well, thanks guys. I hope you guys found this helpful and um, yeah, thanks for watching.